All right, we are here for another episode of Small Business Quick Wins presented by Thrive. And today we have a special guest. This dude is smart. His name is Kenneth Burke, and he's the vice president of marketing of something called Text Request. And he's won all these awards. He's been named 20 under 40 honoree by the tech marketer. He's done a zillion things, all right? He's the guy. But the reason I asked him to come on is that he really knows the world of SMS and text-based communication and marketing. I got to tell you, this is an area that I think is untapped by small business owners and that people that are trying to market their companies and get the word out. And we all get it, right? We all get texts. We all get SMS messages. But how do we use it for our businesses? Kenneth is going to help us break that down in a really simple way. So Kenneth, welcome to Small Business Quick Wins. Thanks for having me. I love to be here. Love that intro, by the way. Fired up, man. I'm fired up. I feel like I want to go text somebody right now. So first of all, tell me about Kenneth. Tell me about your world. Tell me about Text Request. Who are you? Yeah, so Text Request is a business text messaging platform. The fast and short of it is nobody answers phone calls anymore. But if you're a small business owner or, or leader in a small business, you've got to connect with customers in order to make sales and move your business forward. And so we give you a text platform to be able to do that. So you can text your customers from your business phone number directly on your computer or any other device you use. So you can stop making phone calls and start actually getting responses. So oh, that's the I like that. fast and short. You're right. Nobody has a phone. I don't have a phone in my office anymore. It's crazy. Okay. So take me through this as if I'm clueless because I am. And now I own, let's say I own an HVAC company and I got a database of customers or whatever. And I want to leverage SMS and text marketing. How do I get started? What do I do? Yeah. I, and I would say a lot of the time, if you are somebody in that situation, you probably are already texting from your personal cell phone by default, right? Because it's probably how your customers are trying to interact with you or with your technicians or whomever they've contacted there. And I think it's helpful to start to approach it as not thinking about it as something entirely new. It's something that is already happening and now you're going to put some fuel behind that fire. So you can harness it and you can use it professionally to really scale. But let's say you already have a, a contact database. Things get really easy, right? So pretty much you need to make sure you've got contact opt-ins. So if these people have already worked with you, you're good to go, usually. They're edge cases, but usually you're good to go. You just can't go buy a contact list, basically, which we would never recommend anyway. Anyway, but you've got your contacts. You've got a list. You may want to segment them. Just as you get started, you may want to segment by services, or maybe these people are on say an annual contract if you're an HVAC service provider or these people were just one-time um, customers. You can start there and I'll pull that back together to show you how that, that can really make you more money in a second. Anyway, but then you just need to get them into a system, right? Like if you were going to start emailing, you're going to, you'd upload everybody into an email marketing platform. You would do the same thing for text message. And then you decide what message you want to send and you send it. I think a lot of times, especially with home services, we work with home services heavily. You've got your back and forth texting for scheduling, but then you have your seasonal promotions or your pushes. If you're anyone in pest control or lawn care, spring is here, but going into spring, you want to tap your customer base to say, hey, let's go ahead and get something scheduled, make your yard wonderful to spend time in. Maybe you want to push to, to prepay for the year. Say, hey, if you go ahead and prepay for the year, we'll give you 10% off, et cetera. There are a lot of options there. I could ramble all day about it. But the key, I think, to keep in mind is that the average text is seen immediately. And if you can get somebody's attention immediately, that has a whole host of benefits. So then just imagine what could you use that attention for? You don't want to abuse it. You don't want to just spam everybody. You don't want to bombard them with messages every day. But if you need to get something scheduled, if you need to upsell a new product, if you need to say, hey, we're doing a push for new reviews or whatever it is, that's a great way. And I'll stop there and let you course correct me where you want to go. So, so that's the thing. As you were talking, I said to myself, almost like shame on me. It's so easy. The same way it's so easy to send out an email. All you're doing is sending it out, basically an email. It's not email. It's going out via text. And why isn't everybody doing this? And I guess the first thing that comes to mind is when you send it out, is it coming from a human being's uh, account? right, where the recipient is then going to be able to reply to that text? Or is it coming from some sort of generic number where it's a one-way thing where somebody has to click on something in order to take an action? 
Yeah, in, in our case, the way just text request as a platform works is this is added to your existing business number. So the same number you've been using to call everybody for ages that you've been promoting for ages, we just add SMS to that without affecting the voice side. So if it's somebody you've worked with before, they may already have it saved in their phone and their contacts, which is great. And then in our case, it is also conversational. So if somebody can reply, maybe that's the action step you want them to take is right. to just say, hey, reply and we'll you know, schedule service or we'll answer questions about this offering or whatever it is, or we'll send you a link to then apply for whatever the thing is. But you got to um, be really careful, right? Because so like my wife's a physician and if she sent out a message, uh, she's a dermatologist, right? If yep. she sent out a message via her cell phone to all of her patients saying, hey, come in this month and check out something about a laser or a discount or whatever. And then people could reply to that. That would be the worst thing of all. She would lose her mind. So is it you're better off unless you really want that level of interaction and going back and forth, you're better off not having it come from you personally. Like you have to really think that out before you hit send. Semantics here, but define personally versus from the business, right? So when we talk about pushing it out from your business number and it's a, it is a person who is sending the message, but it is a business owned platform. The same way it would be if you sent something through your HubSpot or MailChimp. And so if you want, if you have, maybe you have front office staff, your wife is a dermatologist, right. maybe you have that. And that's exactly what you want is you want to push this promotion out there. And then you want those conversations started so you can I then see. get people on the books. So it's not necessarily your main number, right? That you use with your friends, right? There's another number. It's a work number, but it is a human behind it. So that way they can reply. And then you really probably can close that business. And that's super cool. So flavor one is from a human account where you're having conversational. And then what flavor two is more of the generic push where you're trying to get people to click and go on a website. Is that basically it? Yeah. And do you see in terms of performance, is one better than the other in terms of generating real business? We tend to see, I'll, I'll call it a hybrid, really. That's an unanswered. But we tend to see that if you do a, a push, and I, I, the example that comes to mind is a, a marketing agency who uses text for their newsletter, so for their content syndication. And so they'll have a new thing a new article or blog post, whatever, and it'll be three ways to get more leads. And they'll push it out and they'll add a, let us know if you have questions about this. And so they're pushing people to a link to go view the content, but then they're using it to start conversations there that they can then turn into sales conversations and upsell opportunities. And so a, a lot of times people are going to respond whether you ask them to or not. And that can be a pro or a con depending on your business or the setup you want. Sometimes you just don't want responses. So maybe you want to put a do not reply or like just click the link, don't reply or something like that. Or maybe you do have somebody who's monitoring inbound responses. So you can handle that and turn that into revenue as well. So it's, again, it's an unanswered, but it's a pick your flavor of choice. So, so coming out of this recording, I, I think that what I'm getting is the numero uno thing that any small business owner should do whether they're ready to get involved in SMS and text-based communication and marketing or not is on every uh, path that people give you their information, whether it's on a website, whether it's a physical form someone fills out, uh, when someone's buying something from you, whatever it is that you should be asking for that person's cell phone number and then also asking for permission to send them those communications. Because even if you're not ready today, this is an incredible asset that is super easy to leverage, very cost effective. But if you don't have the database, we're wasting everybody's time. Is that like the numero uno thing that we should take out of this? I would say so, because there's two pieces there that are both are quick wins. So one is the, the compliance side, right? You ask for permission, that covers your, your tail. Two is the, it, the, the quick win of just beginning to gather the right info right? That's very simple to do to add a field to your contact forms or to have your agency do it for you. It takes 30 seconds. And then you can start to build a list that is a, a revenue producer for you. Okay, perfect. Now, before we like wrap up and stuff, I want to know something. What is, you have to tell somebody one thing they absolutely always have to keep in mind when they're setting up a program like this and one pitfall that they absolutely must avoid. What would that be? People need to opt in. If they try to opt out, let them opt out. That's 
those are the pitfalls. That's it. So that's simple. It's pretty, it's pretty, it's very similar to emo, right? It's a little more personal. Text feels a little more personal to people. There's a little more, it's a little closer to home and it's not so inundated with spam as well. So it stands out more. And as long as you are using that respectfully, customers like it. Nine in 10 customers want to text with a business. Between 70 and 80% want to text for payments and reminders for scheduling services for customer service. Um, so I think just keep those facts in mind and then text as you want to be texted unto and you should be good to go i like that text as you want to be texted unto that's that's i like that it's like a fortune cookie or something All right, so the last segment of this thing yeah, that we always do is you've given a lot of great advice today very valuable i've learned a lot but in your career have you and we don't need to drop names and embarrass anybody but have you gotten any really bad advice business advice life advice that you received and then you're like that was ridiculous what is a piece of advice you're like don't ever follow this because this was bad hey, you might not like this because i know i've seen you share this before but i really hate the advice be authentic and i dislike it not because it's necessarily bad but because i, I think part of it is misleading because it's be authentic with a purpose it's not be authentic through and through there are some pieces of me that are unflattering that are negative, that is not the reputation I want to build and that if I put on display or showcase would not be helpful to my company either. However, there are other aspects of me that are wonderful and that people resonate with. And those are the ones I want to showcase. And so I don't really like be authentic. I like to define the parts of your, I don't know, your natural person, your personality that you want to highlight. And then lean into that. All right. I could deal with that. I could be uh, become a highlight reel. I'm all for it. All right. Before we wrap up here, how does everybody get involved with Kenneth's world? How do they follow you? What are they? Just all Kenneth things. Tell us. Sure. So uh, I'm on LinkedIn. That's the easiest way. You can also subscribe to my newsletter, berkfits.com. And then if you want to get in touch with me, you can DM me or email me or text. And then with text requests, it's just textrequest.com. So you can check out the site, do a demo, whatever's good for you. Listen, everybody, K Kenneth Burke is a great follow on LinkedIn. Connect with him there. And I want to thank you for being here, Kenneth. And I want to thank everybody for checking out Small Business Quick Wins presented by Thrive. Kenneth, thank you. Thank you. All right. See you soon.